answer the question, what human occupation is the most useful socially? Since man's basic tool of survival is his mind, the most crucially important occupation is the discovery of knowledge, that is, the occupation of scientists. But scientists are not concerned with society, with social issues, or with other men. Scientists are essentially loners. They pursue knowledge for the sake of knowledge. A great many scientific discoveries and technological discoveries were known before the Industrial Revolution and did not affect human existence. The steam engine, for instance, was known in ancient Greece, but knowledge of that sort remained an exclusive concern that lived and died with the scientists, and for century after century had no connection to the lives of the rest of mankind. Now suppose that a group of men decided to make it their job to bring the results of the achievements of science within the reach of men, to apply scientific knowledge to the improvement of man's life on Earth. Wouldn't such men be the greatest social benefactors as they have been since the Industrial Revolution? Will you excuse me, please? I don't want any pictures taken of me. Please, gentlemen, don't it's photograph me. I am that. much too old for that. Just leave me as I am. Wouldn't such men be the greatest social benefactors as they have been since the Industrial Revolution? Shouldn't the socially concerned humanitarians those who hold social usefulness as their highest value regard such men as heroes. If I say no, such men are not regarded as heroes today. They are the most hated, blamed, denounced men in the humanitarian society. Would you believe me? Or would you think that I'm inventing some sort of irrational fiction? And would you say that something is wrong, terribly wrong, in such a society? But this isn't all. There is something much worse. It isn't merely the fact that these heroic men are the victim of an unspeakable injustice. It is the fact that they are first to perpetuate that injustice against themselves, that they adopt a public stance of perpetual apology and universal appeasement, proclaiming themselves guilty of an unspecified evil, begging the forgiveness of every two-bit intellectual, every unskilled laborer, every unemployed politician. No, this is not fiction. That country is the United States of America today. That self-destroying group of men is you the American businessmen. When I say you, I mean the group as a whole. I accept the tenet that present company is accepted. However, if any of you find a shoe that fits, wear it with my compliments. Karl Marx predicted that capitalism would commit suicide. The American businessmen are carrying out that prediction. In destroying themselves, they are destroying capitalism, of which they are the symbol and product. In America, which is the greatest and freest example of capitalism man has ever reached. There is no outside power that can destroy such men and such a country. Only an inner power can do it the power of morality. More specifically, the power of a contemptibly evil idea accepted as a moral principle, altruism. Remember that altruism does not mean benevolence or consideration for other men. Altruism is a moral theory which preaches that man must sacrifice himself for others. 
that he must place the interests of others above his own, that he must live for the sake of others. Altruism is a monstrous notion. It is the morality of cannibals devouring one another. It is, it is a theory of profound hatred for men. I seem to have competition here. I'll let you go first. Okay? It is a theory of profound hatred for men, for reason, for achievement, for any form of human success or happiness on earth. Altruism is incompatible with capitalism and with, and with businessmen. Businessmen are a cheerful, benevolent, optimistic, predominantly American phenomenon. The essence of their job is the constant struggle to improve human life to satisfy human needs and desires, not to practice resignation, surrender, and worship of suffering. And here is the profound gulf between businessmen and altruism. Businessmen do not sacrifice themselves to others. If they did, they would be out of business in a few months or days. They profit, they grow rich, they are rewarded as they should be. This is what the altruists, the collectivists, and other sundry humanitarians hate the businessmen for, that they pursue a personal goal and succeed at it. Do not fool yourself by thinking that altruists are motivated by compassion for the suffering. They are motivated by hatred for the successful. The evidence is all around us Thank you. The evidence is all around us, but one small example sticks in my mind as extremely eloquent. In the early 1930s, an assistant of Jane Addams, the famous social worker, went on a visit to Soviet Russia and wrote a book about her experience. The sentence I remember is, quote, how wonderful it was to see everybody equally shabby, close quote. If you think that you should try to appease the altruist, this is what you are appeasing. The great tragedy of capitalism and of America is the fact that most businessmen have accepted the morality of altruism and are trying to live up to it, which means that they are doomed before they start. Another contributory evil is the philosophical root of altruism, which is mysticism, the belief in the supernatural, which preaches contempt for matter, for wealth, well-being, or happiness on earth. The mystics are constantly crying appeals for your pity, your compassion, your help to the less fortunate, yet they are condemning you for all the qualities of character that make you able to help them. Evil theories have to rely on evil means in order to hold their victims. Altruism and collectivism cannot appeal to human virtues. They have to appeal to human weaknesses. And where there are not enough weaknesses, they have to manufacture them. It is in the nature of altruism and collectivism that the more they use, need a person or a group, the more they denounce their victims, induce guilt, and struggle never to let the victims discover their own importance and acquire self-esteem. The businessmen are needed most by the so-called humanitarians because the businessmen produce the sustenance the humanitarians are unable to produce. Doctors come next in the hierarchy of being needed and observe the hostility, the denunciations, and the attempts to enslave the doctors in today's society. 
most businessmen today have accepted the feeling of guilt induced in them by the altruist. They are accused of anything and everything. For instance, ecologists denounce the businessmen for their refusal to sacrifice themselves to the snail doctor and the prohibition house watch. But the businessmen's actual guilt is their treason against themselves, which is also their treason against their country. The statement that aroused such fury among the collectivists, quote, what's good for General Motors is good for the country, was true. And the reverse is also true. What's bad for industry is bad for this country. I am here to ask you a question on my own, not on borrowed premises. What are you doing to the advocates of capitalism, particularly the young? Appeasement is a betrayal not only of one's own values, but of all those who share one's values. If, for whatever misguided reason, businessmen are indifferent to and ignorant of philosophy, particularly moral and political philosophy. It would be better if they kept silent rather than spread the horrible advertisements that make us cringe with embarrassment. By us, I mean advocates of capitalism. Mobile Oil ran ads in the New York Times which stated the following, I quote from memory, quote, of the expression free, private, responsible enterprise we strike out free and private as non-essential, close quote. One of the big industries advertises on television that they are full of, quote, people working for people, close quote. And some other big company announces on television that its goal is, quote, ideas that help people, close quote. I do not know what the ghastly PR man who came up with these slogans wanted us to think that the companies worked for free or that they traded with people rather than with animals. Actually, their purpose was to suggest populism in some indirect kind. It was actually the desire to give the impression that businessmen work for nothing but others, for the people that they are in fact no better than the politicians. 